thank you thank you so much for tuning in well firstly we're outside today because we're locked down and the house is pretty noisy so you know just for some peace and quiet i just thought i'd record from outside so without wasting any more time this one is for the grade 11s it is geography we're going to be doing climatology and um yeah don't forget to ask any questions if you need more clarity to like this video and to subscribe so yeah let's get to it okay so first things first you need to understand these two you need to know them you need to understand them it shouldn't even be a thing of you cramming them you should understand them so the first one is a high pressure cell and a high pressure cell moves anti-clockwise as you can see in the drawing and it is descending dry air and this air heats up adiabatically as it descends you know okay and then there's a low pressure cell a low pressure cell uh, moves clockwise and it is ascending moist air which cools down as it ascends so a high pressure cell you, um, results in dry cloudy conditions I mean cl dry clear conditions whereas a low pressure cell results in sort of rainy cloudy conditions this is because obviously the moist air as it rises it condenses and it cools down and condenses and falls as rainfall so yeah that is the first thing that you need to know it's going to help you understand everything that we'll be doing later i mean further on <laughs> okay so what i'm holding up here as the title says is a simplified representation of the earth's pressure belt and this comes from the cambridge study and master study guide so yeah thank you for their i mean to them for this book okay so yeah as you can see there are three pressure belts oh my word guys this book is so heavy please forgive me for moving so much okay so it is firstly the intertropical convergence zone which is found between zero and five degrees both both north and south like both in the northern and southern hemisphere and then it's the sub subtropical high which occurs between 20 to 35 degrees both north and south as well as the subpolar low which occurs between 55 to 65 degrees north and south so yeah those are our three pressure belts basically six but three so and firstly remember that diagram i showed you so if it is a subpolar low that means that it is air it's ascending air but because it is in the polar regions we won't say that it is warm air that rises but rather that it is um cold air that rises whereas the subtropical high because it's a high pressure cell it is warm air that descends and then the intertropical conversion zone as you can see there's an l showing that there is a low pressure cell which means it is warm mo moist air that rises and this sort of gives you an idea of why you find tropical rainforests in areas close to the equator mainly because of that low pressure cell as well as the Hadley cell, which we will get into later, and why you find so many deserts between 20 and 35 degrees, both north and south, because of the subtropical high. It is a high pressure cell, so it's dry air that descends, so there isn't so much rainfall in those regions. So, yeah. Okay, this is a diagram of tricellular circulation, but only in one hemisphere okay so firstly we're going to start off with the hadley cell this is the largest cell and it is found between zero and 30 degrees both north and south the hadley cell is in i mean with the hadley cell warm lens or less dense air rises and as this air rises it results in um convectional rain hence why you see there there's cumulonimbus clouds because as this warm air rises it condenses cools forms cu cumulonimbus clouds which results 
in a lot of rainfall so hence why there's so much rainfall in the like close to the equator you know why so many tropical rainforests are found there and then the next one is the polar cell it has cold dense air which rises and as it flows down towards the polar cell it doesn't result in rainfall in as much rainfall as the hadley cell does therefore there's no cumulonimbus clouds that forms so yeah and then the next one that we have is the feral cell the feral cell is not it doesn't flow according to temperature but it flows according to the directions of either the hadley cell or the polar cell that is why there is a divergence between the polar cell and the feral cell and between the feral cell and the hadley cell the feral cell plays a role in transporting the warm air from the equator towards the poles and the cold air from the poles towards the equator this plays a role in regulating the temperature of the the earth because without this the equator would be too hot and the poles would be too cold okay now i'm going to talk about the coriolis effect which is caused by the coriolis force yeah my hands are tired that's why i decided to leave the book but yeah okay so you know the earth spins spins around its own axis so when the earth spins because the because the earth is not a circle like it's not a normal circle so the equator is wider than the poles so therefore as the earth spins the equator will be like the speed of the spinning will be faster at the equator as opposed to the poles and because of that the coriolis force will be stronger near the equator and weakest at the point i say near the equator because like on actual zero like zero there is no coriolis force at all so yeah that is why i say near so yeah because of that because of the spinning that is why the coriolis force again i'm just repeating that coriolis force will be strongest near the equator and weakest by the poles okay cool i hope you get that cool so this coriolis force is the reason why there's deflection in winds so without the coriolis force if you would drop um like if you would drop or throw something it would just like because of the wind it would just move straight but the coriolis force deflects the wind and this deflection in the southern hemisphere is to the left and it is to the right in the northern hemisphere and then we move on to a pressure gradient force so basically a pressure gradient force is the movement of air from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure and if you've seen a synoptic weather map there's isobars and isobars are basically um, areas that join um, areas of equal air, air pressure yeah sorry so okay these are your isobars a pressure gradient force flows to a right angle of the isobar you can just have a look in your textbooks just for clarity if you don't i mean like the diagram if you don't understand so now the coriolis force and the pressure gradient force results in what we call a geostrophic wind which is when the pressure gradient force flows i mean um, flows as normal from a high pressure to a low pressure and then the coriolis force causes a deflection that results in a geostrophic wind yeah so that is i think that is it <laughs> i hope i didn't leave anything else thank you so much for tuning in no i really feel like i left something out just give me a second let me i knew i forgot something i forgot to tell you about easterlies and westerlies so as you see in this diagram this diagram basically shows you how everything comes together there none of the events that i spoke about are isolated as you can see there's the polar cell there's the feral cell there's the hadley cell there's um 
there's all the movement and yeah i just wanted to show you how everything comes together but what i did forget to tell you about is the trade winds basically so between zero and 30 degrees we find the northeasterly trade winds and that is on the northern hemisphere whereas in the southern hemisphere obviously it's going to be the south easterly trade winds and the name is the name explains it as in like which direction they flow to and i mean just to explain it further these winds uh, blow from the mid latitudes towards the equator and then between 30 to 60 degrees we have the westerlies and again the name describes the direction and these winds blow from the mid latitudes towards the poles and then we have again the polar easterly oh my word my hand hurts guys i'm so sorry for moving we have the polar easterlies oh my word the wind blows from the polar regions towards the high latitudes so yeah let me just put this book away <laughs> So yeah, basically all these winds and all these cells have one goal. Their goal is to distribute heat and cold among the earth. Because without all of this, the equator would be too hot and the poles would be too cold. So now because of all these winds and 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 the the warm wind from the equator is able to be spread towards the poles and the cold wind um because of the polar cell which you know flows south downwards or <laughs> northwards is able to move or transport cold wind from poles to the equator yeah i hope i'm not confusing you yeah so that is it for today i thank you so much for tuning in guys thank you and don't forget to ask any questions feel free to like subscribe and tell everybody thank you so much